it's Carrie, your tushy enthusiast, and today we are discussing irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS, and inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, what they are and how they're different. So IBS and IBD often get confused because, well, they share the same first two letters of their acronym. So thing is, they have different symptoms and they have very different treatments. What is IBS? Well, irritable bowel syndrome is a syndrome, and that means there's no biological markers that indicate whether you have it or not. So in order to be diagnosed, it's usually through a collection of signs and symptoms. And this next number may shock you, but IBS affects about 10 to 20% of the general population. And so this means there's probably a lot of us who have it and don't even know about it. So what are some of the symptoms that indicate that you have IBS? Well, this can include abdominal pain, constipation, diarrhea, or alternating diarrhea and constipation, gassiness, bloating, and just general discomfort in this area. Why does IBS happen? Well, symptoms appear to be due to disturbances in your colonic motility. Well, what the hell is that? Colonic motility is just a fancy way of saying the muscle contractions in your bowel that get things moving smoothly along. And symptoms can also be caused by sensitivities to food, gas, and even the stool that's in your bowel. So let's go back to colonic motility for just a second. So these alternate patterns of muscle contractions in your bowel appear to be caused by disrupted communication between your brain and your gut because those two are integrally linked. And this can be caused by a genetic predisposition or even chronic stress. Just to name a couple. To see if you have IBS, you should probably consult a doctor, which they will likely diagnose you through your symptoms. And they may even suggest a colonoscopy to rule out anything else. Real quickly, what is a colonoscopy? Well, it's an endoscopic procedure in which a doctor will uh, put a camera through up your butthole and to take a peek to make sure that all of your guts are doing good. How do you treat IBS? Well, IBS can be managed through fiber supplements that regulate your bowel movements, or your doctor may even prescribe you medication that help alleviate some of the spasm in your muscle contraction, and they will likely suggest that you keep a food diary in which you are eliminating foods that are irritating your bowels and making your symptoms worse. Now let's move on to IBD. Inflammatory bowel disease is a disease with biological markers that your doctor can see to give you a diagnosis versus just symptoms. And IBD is associated with rectal bleeding, diarrhea that's often watery or even bloody, abdominal pain, and sometimes even weight loss, anemia, and vomiting. So IBD is caused by an immune response from your own body attacking the harmless bacteria in your gut. And this can cause inflammation, thickening of your intestinal wall, and ulcerations, and in which your doctor is able to see through a colonoscopy. And that's how they're gonna give you your diagnosis. There's two types of IBD, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Crohn's disease affects the small and large intestines, while ulcerative colitis only affects the large intestines. And IBD can be treated through steroids or immunosuppressive medications prescribed by your doctor. And you will also need to get regular surveillance and checkups from your doctor to make sure that your symptoms are getting better and things are not getting worse. And another thing, IBS and IBD can actually occur at the same time in the same human. And so sometimes this can create challenges for your doctor or nurse practitioner to figure out which one's active and which one needs to be treated. But of course, they can figure this out through a colonoscopy. And I just learned from one of our members of our Facebook group that there's actually a fecal test that can test if you have IBD or not now. Something that IBS and IBD have in common is that it makes you poop a lot like multiple times a day, and you can even have enlarged or inflamed hemorrhoids that end up bleeding. So when you poop a lot, this means you are wiping a lot with dry, scratchy paper that irritates your butthole. And your butthole is literally screaming out for help and for a gentler way to clean after you poop. So doctors recommend that IBS and IBD patients wash with a bidet after you poop because this thing washes your butt with a gentle stream of water after every single time you poop and without irritation. 
And a couple more things before I sign off for today. We'd like to invite you to join our community hosted on Facebook groups. It's called The Tushy Movement gut feelings, bidet life, and butt stuff. And in this group, you're here with people from all around the world where we share our knowledge, our experiences, our stories, and questions and humor on all things poop, guts, butt, and bathroom sustainability, and of course, all Tushy products. And so if you'd like to join the group, there is a link to join in the description below, and make sure to answer all of the entry questions in order for us to let you in. If you like my t-shirt, you can actually get this on the Tushy website, hellotushy.com forward slash vlog. If you like this video and learned about IBS and IBD, please give our channel a subscribe. We post videos every single week on butt, guts, sustainability, and all Tushy products. All right, happy pooping.